So one of the biggest things with the A7S was this new S-Log2 recording. So let's talk about that a little bit. First of all, this isn't really a different file type. It is just a picture profile. So you're going to be using the same XAVC files as the Sony AS, uh, A7S records on for the normal stuff. You're just going to assign a different picture profile. So what you're going to need to do is go into the picture profile settings of your camera and switch to picture profile 7 and there's no explanation right on the camera and actually nothing in the manual about that or what it does so you're going to need to know that ahead of time so once you do that and it's going to be limited to 64 gig files just like all the XAVC file types so once you do that and bring that into your computer you're going to be looking at uh, something that looks really dull and boring and if you play through that, you're going to be able to tell that there it, it's really a lifeless image. And the reason why is because it's not actually a separate format or like a raw file. There's no data in there. It is just an empty, empty picture profile. So you're definitely going to need to, to do some um, editing on this. And so what I did is in Premiere, I did find this, um, if you look, if you do a search even, there is for the Sony, if you do a search for Sony in there, there's a Sony F3 S Log 2, uh, what is that, to LIN. And I went ahead and added that to, um, to my profile. And when you do that, it brings in two things. It brings in the RGB curves, which is done automatically. And I didn't end up going in there and editing that at all. And it also brings in this fast color corrector. So I'll... Um, I'll go ahead and take those in here and I'm going to go ahead and add that into this blank one that I have not edited yet. And okay, so now it gives it a little bit of life, but you can see that a lot is still missing. So if we go into the fast color corrector, uh, we can go ahead and take a look at some of these settings. I can already see, I won't worry about the colors yet. Um, let's start with the input levels. It comes in a bit dark, but you can see all of these highlights are here, even though we're capturing all this detail in the shadows. This is bright outside and this is dark indoors. So already we're seeing there's a huge amount of dynamic range being recorded in this. So we'll go ahead and boost those shadows just a bit. And, uh, and then we'll change the input levels on the black just to bring a little bit more contrast in there. And already I have things looking a lot better uh, than they were before. And the other thing I'm going to do is the saturation. We can bring it up probably a little bit more. And you can see that all of the saturation is now coming back because it was gone in the original file. So even by default, it had it at 170. So that was part of the setting that it was being applied. Now, um, I'll put a little more magenta in there because it came out pretty green because of all these outside. So we'll add a little bit of magenta to that shot. And all right, so we've got something that works there. Now you can also, you know, go in there a little bit more and we can also add some sharpening because there's probably uh, nothing really being added to this default file. So we'll go ahead and put, um, put 18 in there and that'll give us something a little bit sharper. You could even try to um, add some contrast, brightness and contrast, add that in there and try to bring a little bit more contrast. We can do that in the, in the, um, with the curves as well if you want to. I don't know, I think it has enough for me. It starts getting a little bit much on that. So now just to show you, uh, this is the same scene recorded except using the regular XAVC format and you can definitely see the differences in that compared to my other one. All of these highlights that are completely blown uh, that are completely blown out in my original file right here are now back when I use the S log profile. So it it definitely succeeds at what it's trying to do, and that is to expand the dynamic range. It's a muddy looking file. It takes quite a bit to get it back, and uh, even when you do, you know, it's still not my favorite to work with. And uh, it, you know, it's not raw data, so you are processing the image a little bit. It'll take a, a small hit on quality, but you are going to be able to get that back. Now, here is the huge thing. It records at a minimum of ISO 
200. You heard that right. You are not allowed in this camera to record S-Log2 at anything other than 3200 ISO and above. You are gonna need some serious ND filters if you are gonna wanna use that anywhere outdoors or in decent light. So in this case, it wasn't too bad because I was indoors and recording at a pretty high ISO anyway. However, if you're outdoors, I, I mean, it is gonna take some serious stopping down to be able to get that profile to work on this camera. So already tremendously limiting just by that. Now the Sony engineers are basically using their skills to find out what is the ISO where the maximum dynamic range can be captured. However, for practical shooting, it really limits you a lot to be at 3200 ISO. Also, you're gonna see grain. There really is grain at 3200 ISO, even in this camera. It still looks pretty good, but you're gonna want noise reduction uh, if you're gonna be using this file for something. So that is a huge issue for me, and it really took a lot of the fun out of this profile. Does it have its use? Yeah, if you need to capture a scene like this and maintain those highlights, and still get those shadows, it's great. However, just keep in mind, these are really dull files. They're gonna take a lot to get them back uh, to, to where you can use them again. And at 3200 ISO, it's really gonna put a damper on how you are shooting with this camera. You're gonna need some serious ND filters, so go ahead and stock up, and then take a look at the rest of the videos. Head to learningcameras.com. We're gonna have some more information on that. So hopefully this has helped you in knowing and understanding what S-Log2 is in the Sony a7S. I apologize that I am not a colorist and this is not what I do uh, best as far as toning and, and mapping images like that. However, it was a trial and error process for me and hopefully it can be beneficial to you.